hello students now we shall begin the prose part of the unit 1 the best christmas present in the world by michael a morpojo the best christmas present in the world by michael morpojo now this lesson is a war story against the backdrop of christmas a festival marked by family reunion exchange of presents in this story we find the character kuni aged 101 receives a present from a stranger whom she mistakes for a long awaited husband what is the present the letter or the mistaken identity of the vis- visitor the best christmas present in the world now about the author michael morpojo was born on 5th october 1943 in st albans united kingdom he was an english playwright book author and a poet too he is known best for children's novels such as war horse now before we start let me ask you a question do you all like gifts we all like gifts to give gifts and to receive gifts this story is based on a real life situation in a person's life as i gave you the introduction it is based on a real life uh, incident and we will as you learn this lesson you will understand it now shall we start the best christmas present in the world there are some dates or periods of time in the history of the world that are so significant that everyone knows and remembers them the story you will read mentions one such date and event a war between the british and the germans in 1914 can you guess which war it was yes it is it was a world war 1 so it was between the central powers and the allied powers now when you see below you find this red box there there are few dates given right there are few dates given you will have to find the events which happens to the dates okay there is an option given uh, the answers are on page 23 since you don't have the textbook you will not be able to find it but just try to find the answers for all this okay now shall we start with the lesson i spotted it in a junk shop in britport a roll top desk the man said it was early 19th century and oak i had wanted one but they were far too expensive this was this one was in a bad condition the roll top in several pieces one leg clumsily mended scotch marks all down one side it was going for very little money i thought i could restore it it would be a risk a challenge but i had to have it i paid the man and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the garage i began work on it on christmas eve now i spotted it in a junk shop who is the i there he is the author michael spotted it in a junk shop junk shop is a place where you they sell second hand goods i have given the meanings to the side of the uh, slide a junk shop in britport a roll top desk roll top desk is a desk with flexible sliding cover so you can move the cover up and down 
I had wanted one, but they were far too expensive. Was, the author wanted a desk, uh, and but it was what he wanted was very expensive. So he is going to a junk shop to get a second-hand one, and there he finds a nineteenth-century oak uh, furniture uh, roll-top desk, but it was in a very bad condition. The roll top in several pieces. The roll, the top where you can roll, it was in several pieces. One leg clumsily mended. Clumsily mended means it was not repaired properly. Scotch marks bur means burned marks. There were it. Uh, this table or this desk uh, had caught fire. It was going for very little money. So because of all these problems on that uh, roll top desk. Now you you could buy it for a very little money. I thought I could restore it. So here the author is singing. He can you know uh, make it into a better one. It is he knows it is a risk, is a challenge, but he had to do it because he wanted a roll top desk so that he can you know whatever he writes he can keep it there. I paid the money and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the garage. So he pays the money and he brings to his house i began work on it on christmas eve so he started to work on the uh, roll top desk uh, on christmas eve christmas eve is a day uh, removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawer the veneer had left almost everywhere so he he pulled out the roll top and also the drawers he pulled out everything the veneer had left uh, lifted almost everywhere veneer means it's a thin layer of plastic or decorative wood on a furniture of cheap wood so it's like you know uh, covering it with a uh, sheet plastic sheet so that you don't see the bad wood underneath And it looked like water damage to me. So he, the author is saying there was some water damage to that uh, roll top desk. Both fire and water had clearly taken their role on their desk. On this desk, both fire and water. So this uh, table has undergone fire, and also there, were, you know, uh, once it was caught in fire, somebody had poured water on it. So it was totally, you know, there was damage in both ways. The last drawer was stuck fast. So there was one last drawer. As you see in the picture, there are three drawers. And the last one was stuck fast. It was shut very tight. I, I tried all I could to ease it out gently. So the author is trying to pull it out very gently. In the end, I had to use brute force. Brute means, uh, force means, you know, he had to pull it out very uh, st strongly I struck it sharply with the side of my fist so he's holding on to the one side of it is his fist and the draw drawer flew open to reveal a shallow space underneath a secret drawer so uh, as he pulled it very uh, strongly it just opened up and the drawer flew open to show there was a small shallow space underneath so in that there is also another space, a secret drawer where you can keep secret things. There was something in there. So when he saw there was something else inside that. I reached in and took out a small black tin box. So he pulls the drawer uh, very sh strongly and it opens up. And there he finds a, a shallow space and also he finds a secret drawer there. From there you know he finds out a small black tin box cello taped to the top of it was a piece of lined note paper and written on it in shaky handwriting so on that uh, small tin box you no know, uh, there was a small paper on and it was cello taped and it was written jim's last letter received january 25th 1915 so on that black tin box, there was a paper, note paper, 
and it was stuck to to the box with a cello tape and on that it was written with shaky handwriting shaky handwriting means a per, uh, an old person writing so you no know, you don't you don't get it correctly uh, the letters you know uh, are not in a proper way jim's last letter received january 25th 19 15 so it is on the top of it it is written jim's last letter uh, received on january 25th 1915 to be to be buried with me when the time comes so whoever is written uh, uh, the person has said it should be buried with me whenever the person dies it should be buried with him or, or her when the time comes i knew as i did it that it was wrong of me to open the box so the author knew it is a wrong thing to open the box but you know the curiosity got the better of my scruples it usually does so you know when you uh, when there is something secret inside a box you always have the tendency to know what it is inside there so he is trying to open the box uh, and see what is inside the box inside the box there was a envelope the address read mrs jim mark person 12 copper beaches bridport dorset i took out the letter and unfolded it it was written in pencil and dated at the top december 26 1914 so when did she, when did she receive the letter just find out when did she receive the letter she received the letter on january 25 1915 and when was the letter written it was written december 26 1914 it was the day after christmas so in 1914 december 26 uh, a letter was sent to mrs jim mark person uh, and it was written in pencil now when you come to the comprehension check there are two questions what did the author find in a junk shop and what did he find in a secret drawer who do you think had put in it there now before we go on i want you all to write the answers of these two and also the meanings we have given to the sides and also the meanings uh extras what i've given okay so i want to write you i want you all to write the meanings and also the answers as in when we uh, go ahead with the lesson now now we came to know about two characters the first one is the author and the second one is mrs jim mark person to whom the letter is addressed now who has written it now we are going to learn about that dearest kuni kuni is mrs jim mark person okay kuni is jim mark person's wife dearest kuni i write to you in much frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that i must tell you about at once so she is right uh, he is writing uh, the husband jim is writing to his wife okay i write to you in much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that i must tell you about at once so he is writing something has very something very happily the happy things have happened and now where at present where i am and i wanted to share it with you we were all standing in our trenches yesterday morning so jim mark person is the leader of the english troop he was a teacher before joining the army and he was a very brave and courageous kind and hope open hearted person so before going let me tell you jim mark person who is writing the letter he is a leader of the english troop okay now that is why he starts us saying we were all standing in our to in our trenches 
trenches means long deep ditches in the ground where soldiers hide from their enemy so uh, that's why i said he was a leader of the english troop he was a teacher before joining the army he was a very brave and courageous man he was also kind and open hearted so he is telling a story no he is telling um, a incident that happened uh, in their life okay we were all standing to to in our trenches yesterday morning that's christmas morning it was crisp and quite all about as beautiful morning as i've ever seen as cold and frosty as a christmas morning should be so like i told the letter was written on december 26th right 1914 now he's telling what happened on that christmas day on 1914 december 25th 1914 something happened in the war front it was crisp and quiet all about so it was just silent in that uh, war area all were sleeping uh, and it was a beautiful morning as it should be for a christmas morning cold and frosty so it was very uh, peaceful at that time i should be, i should like to be able to tell you that we began it but the truth i'm ashamed to say is that fritz began it whose fritz here a fritz is a name for a german soldier it is a common german name so here jim is writing to his wife and she he is explaining uh, what is happening in the war front i should like to be able to tell you that we began it so what is he saying about that we began it it is a war Uh, but the truth is, I'm ashamed to say, is that Fritz began it. So he's telling that uh, I wanted to tell you that we began the war. The British began the war, but the truth is that it was begun by the German people or the German uh, soldiers. They began the war. First, someone saw a white flag flying from the trenches opposite. So the trenches are on both the sides of the war area. and uh, soldiers are hiding inside there and uh, somebody from the british saw a white flag white when is a white flag used to show peace first someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite then they were calling out to us from across no man's land happy christmas tommy happy christmas here the word tommy is also a common english name and it is used here to refer to british soldiers so fritz is used to refer to german soldiers and tommy is used to refer to british soldiers and uh, now here we go and come back first someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite this is somebody waving a white flag from the german side and they were calling out to us and they were calling out to the uh, in a british people and saying happy christmas tommy happy christmas so they are wishing everyone happy christmas and they were calling out us from across no man's land no man's land is a you no know, uh, it does not either belong to the british people or to the german and there's a small area there when we had got over the surprise some of us shouted back same to you fritz same to you so these british soldiers were very surprised to hear uh, you know Uh, the germans saying happy christmas so once they were you know they realized it was true they call uh, they shouted back saying uh, happy christmas fritz uh, same to you i thought that would be that so uh, jim jim was singing oh uh, it was just wishing and it will be all done we all did but then suddenly one of one of them was up there in his great co- great coat but then suddenly one of them was up there in his gray great coat and waving a white flag don't shoot lads someone shouted and no one did then there were another fritz up on the parapet and another keep your heads down i told the men it's a trick but it wasn't so 
you know uh, as uh, they wished each other they thought it was done it was just a wishing but then suddenly they saw a gray great coat so the uniform worn by the uh the germans were gray okay so one person from there uh, uh stood up and waved the flag again and said don't shout uh, don't shoot lads uh, don't shoot don't shoot and no one did then there was another fritz up on the parapet another ma uh, german uh, soldier was standing on the parapet and uh, and said keep your heads down i told the men it's a trick so they you know these uh, germans you know they were trying to come out and talk to these people but the british were thinking it was like a trick to them but it wasn't one of the germans was waving a bottle above his head it is a christmas day tommy we we have snaps we have sausages we meet you yes so now it was christmas and it was actually time for enjoyment but these soldiers were in the war friend and uh, uh, they couldn't do much of their enjoyment there but then these germans uh you no know, they first wish the british people christmas uh, merry christmas and you know they're waving a white flag to show that we're not going to fight today we'll have peace and uh, uh you know we will just be quiet then then again one of the germans was waving a bottle above his head so there uh, a german soldier takes a bottle and he is showing to the british people it's christmas day tommy we have schnapps the pronunciation is given there as schnapps it's a german drink made from grain it is like a wine okay it is wine and we have sausages also we meet you yes so uh, we will when if you all come down we can give it to you we can have food together by this time there were dozens of them walking towards us across the no man's land and not a rifle between them so as they were talking more uh, the soldiers were walking down across the no man's land and nobody was having a rifle with them they were all just coming down to have enjoyment with the uh, british soldiers little private morris was the first up come on boys what are we waiting for and there was and then there was no stopping them i was the officer i should have stopped them there and then i suppose but the truth is that it never even occurred to me i should all along their lines and ours i could see men walking slowly towards one another gray coat khaki coat meeting in the middle and i was one of them i was part of this in the middle of the war we were making peace so these uh, germans came down uh, and uh, greeted them and they said we have sausages we have wine to drink why don't we all enjoy this christmas uh, day here in this war friend we will not be having any uh, war today we will be having we will be making peace and uh, they they started wishing each other you you can imagine dearest kuni my feelings as i looked into the eyes of the fritz officer who approached me hand outstretched hans wolf he said gripping my hand warmly and holding it i am from dusseldorf i play the cello in the orchestra happy christmas so as the soldiers wished the officers are coming together so the uh, german officer he approaches to jim jim is a british uh, officer army officer so the two main officers are coming to the front and they are wishing each other so the german officer is wishing uh, him and introducing himself saying that i am hans wolf and i am from dusseldorf and he is saying i am hans wolf and he is from dusseldorf and he plays the cello in the orchestra cello is a musical instrument like a large violin it's like a 
large violin and he wishes uh, Jim a happy Christmas. And here we find our, our Jim uh, introducing himself. Captain Jim Markperson, I replied, and a happy Christmas to you. I am a school teacher from Dorset in the West England. So uh, the uh, Captain Jim Markperson, he's a he was a school teacher from Dorset in West England, West of England, and the German uh, officer Hans Wolf was a uh, plays cello in the orchestra, and both of them had their own. Uh, occupation but they joined the army for the country how dorset he smiled i know this place i know it very well so uh, the german captain is saying oh i know dorset i know that place very well i know it very well we share we shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage so these uh, soldiers get uh, rum and wine as a ration and also food there. So they shared e uh, with each other their food and their wine. And we talked, Kuni, how we talked. And they started talking. He spoke almost perfect English. So Jim is uh, you know, right, through his letter telling his wife how this um, German soldier, how we started to talk and you know discuss many things. But it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset. He says he had uh, heard about you know, Dorset. I know that place. He says that. But he has not been to that place. Never even been to England also. So this uh, German captain has not been to England. But he, in the beginning he says, ah, I know Dorset. I know it very well. He had learned all he knew of England from school. So, uh, the, uh, where, where he studied, he learned about the England uh, people or the English people or the British country. His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy, his favorite book, Far From the Madding Crowd. So, this German uh, captain, uh, you know, he reads a lot and his favorite writer was Thomas Hardy, his favorite book, Far From the Madding Crowd. So out there in no man's land, we talked of Bathsheba and Gab Gabriel Oak and Surgeon Troy and Dorset. So they talked in and out so many things of uh, you know uh, about the authors, uh, you know the land, everything they talked. He had a wife and a and one son born just six months ago. So this German captain uh, had uh, was married. He had a wife and a, a son who is just six months old. As I looked about me, there were huddles of khaki and grey everywhere, all over no man's land, smoking, laughing, talking, drinking, eating. So as these two captains were talking, they you know they looked to the to, to the soldiers what they were doing. So you know. Uh, they were all uh, laughing, talking, drinking, eating, smoking at the no man's land. Hans Wolf and I shared what was left of your wonderful Christmas cake. So uh, Jim's wife had sent a present for, his, for her husband, uh, a wonderful Christmas cake. He thought the marzipan was the best he had ever tasted. Marzipan is a cake. You no, know, it's covered on a, it's a sweet covering on a cake made from sugar, egg and almond. Marzipan is a sweet covering. You make the cake and on over the cake, you cover it with sugar, eggs and almond. So, uh, Jim shared that cake uh, with his counterpart. And he loved that cake very much. We agreed about everything and he was my every enemy there were there never was a christmas party like it kuni so he's uh, jim is telling to his wife this was a uh, no christmas party like we never had before even though he's our enemy uh, he's from the enemy uh, country but we all enjoyed that christmas then someone 
sorry let me continue then someone i don't know who brought out a football great coats were dumped in piles to make goal post and the next thing we knew it was tommy against frist out fritz out in the middle of no man's land so all these coats what they were wearing they were that were made as goal post and these two uh, uh, country soldiers started playing football hans wolf and i looked on and cheered clapping our hands and stamping our feet to keep out the cold as much as anything so uh, from no, uh, somebody from the team uh, from the country bought uh, had had football and they started to play football uh, so what did they do they wanted to make goal post so they removed their great coats and you know it is very cold so they used to have they had to wear big big coats uh, on them so they removed that and made it as a goal post and they started to play the tommies and the fritz started to play in the middle of no man's land hans wolf and i uh, looked on and cheered clapping our hands and stamping our feet so we were just standing there and cheering them there was a moment when i noticed our breaths mingling in the air between us he saw it too and smiled jim mark person he said after a while i think this is how we should resolve this war a football match no one dies in a football match no children are orphaned no wives become widows so as and they were talking you know uh, the british and the germans they they felt that they that should, that soldiers felt that the war should be stopped uh, there was a moment when i noticed our breaths mingling in the breaths mingling in the air between us so uh these two uh, captains were standing uh, nearby and they too noticed whenever then when they were talking you know their breaths were you know mingling in the air I means it's very cold so when you talk you know the from your mouth the uh co air comes out and they saw that both the airs were mingling together and that's when hans wolf said jim we should you know uh, stop the war uh, you know by a football match uh, no one dies in a football match no children are orphaned no wives becomes by become widows so no one will die in a football match you know only if there is war uh, children are orphaned or uh, the wives become widows so we should stop the war through this football match i'd prefer cricket i told him then we tommies could be sure of winning probably so jim is saying i think i prefer cricket very much to football and if we play cricket we will win we laughed at that and together we watched the game so they you know they laughed at the joke on the jokes they were saying and you know they were watching the game too sad to say kuni fritz won two goals to one so who won the match the germans won the match okay two goals to one but ha- as hans wolf generously said our goals was wider than theirs so it was quite fair so he was describing about the game the time came and all too soon when the game was finished the snaps snaps and the rum and the sausage and the sausage had long since run out and we knew it was all over i wish hans well and told him i hope he would see his family again soon that the fighting would end and we would all go home so at by uh, after the game was done who who won the match the germans won the match two goals to one and uh, after the match was done uh, the food you know the rum the sauce the snaps all were over and uh, they all wished them uh, each other and they were going back to their uh, trenches and uh, i uh, here uh, jim is saying to hans 
uh, and wishing him that he would meet his family again soon and that the finding, uh, fighting would end and we would, could all go home. So they were all wishing uh, each other, so hoping that the war will end fast and they all could go home and meet their families. I think that I think that it that is what every soldier wants on both sides Hans Wolf said Take care Jim Macperson I shall never forget this moment nor you He saluted and walked away from me slowly unwillingly I felt He turned to me just once and then became one of the hundred of grey coat men coated men drifting back towards their trenches. So that is the feeling in every soldier's mind, isn't it? They want to come back to their family uh, and be in, with their family. And that is that was the wish they were all having in their mind and they sh shared the same wish with each other. Uh, and uh, Hans Wolf is saying, take care, Jim, take care of yourself and we shall never forget this moment. And they say, uh, he's saying, I shall never forget this moment, nor you. I will never forget you or the moment we spent together. You know, eating, dancing, playing, uh, you know, enjoying. And he saluted and walked away from me slowly. Unwillingly, I felt. So he walked, you know, at, at first he saluted and then he walked away very slowly. Uh, unwillingly, he didn't want to go from that side. But then he had to go to the trench he turned to wave just once and then became one of the hundreds of gray coated men drifting towards their trenches he just turned back once and uh, waved at him and the hundreds of gray coated men they are the german soldiers they are going they went back to their trenches that night back in our dugouts we heard them singing a carol and singing it quite beautifully, it was silent night. So after the match was done, after the food they had eaten, they wished everyone uh, and they went back to the trenches. And at night, they uh, these British people heard uh, the Germans singing silent night. Our boys gave them a rousing chorus of Wild Shepherd's Watch. So each side were singing Christmas songs. We exchanged carols for a while and then we all fell silent. So, you know, after the game, after having food and enjoyment, and enjoyment, they went back to their trenches and at night they started singing songs. So they exchanged carols, carols means Christmas songs, for a while and then, they, then we all fell silent. We had had our time of peace and goodwill, a time I will treasure as long as I will. So Jim is telling to his wife or writing to his wife saying that that was a time of peace and goodwill and that this time we all, especially I will treasure it as long as I live. Dearest Cooney, by Christmas next year, this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory. I know from all that had happened today how much both armies long for peace. We shall be together again soon. I am sure of it. Your loving Jim. So here is uh, Jim is ending this uh, letter and telling, uh, telling his wife, By Christmas time next year, this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory. By next Christmas, it will be over. And you know, there will be so long terrible memories where so many children will be killed or so many soldiers will be killed, children will be orphaned, uh, wives will become widows and uh, it will be a distant memory, that's all. I know from all that happened today how much both the armies long for peace. So uh, when you are from in the war front or in the war area, they all have the feeling of peace. They want to have peace. They don't want to fight. That we, we understood uh, from the both the sides of the soldiers. We shall be together soon. I'm sure of it. So he's hoping to be with his wife uh, very soon. 
and is expecting it i am sure of it your loving jim so that is a uh, st uh, letter written by jim to his wife now there are comprehension check we, uh, the first two you have uh, i hope you will do it now we are coming to the next five uh, you read through the lesson and find out the answers these answers and the meanings should be written in your notebook okay now i'll just uh, you know we'll just discuss the answers who had written the letter to whom and when i hope you know who had written the letter jim had written the letter to whom did he write to his wife uh, kuni and when the day after christmas why was the next one why was the letter written what was the wonderful thing that had happened no why why did uh, he write the letter right why did he write the letter what was the wonderful thing that had happened there now you don't have to write the big whole letter as it you can give you know uh, four to five important points in that what jobs did hans wolf and jim mark person have when they were not soldiers i i'm sure you will know uh, hans wolf was a he played for a, a orchestra Uh, the cello instrument and jing mark person was a school teacher had hans wolf ever been to dorset why did he say he knew it so uh, hans wolf uh, says he had uh, he knew dorset very well how did he know it is also said that uh, he had you know he had not been there right but he read it he came to know about dorset through the books he read okay i'm just giving you the um, uh, hints you have to frame it into correct sentences and write the answers do you think jing mark person came back from the war how do you know this now that you'll have to uh, think and write okay did he come back from the war uh, yes or no so that is the half part of the lesson okay now the next part will continue in the next session thank you